Accept the motion to approve the minutes as amended for the July 10, 2014 regular board meeting. Motion by Chapman. Second. Second by Battery. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Thank you. Public comment. Maggie, this is the first row. <laughs> Hi, my name is Maggie Mall, and I have two comments. My first one is concerning the representing the Planning Commission. Uh, we had our monthly meeting last night, and we have had monthly meetings scheduled, of which we've canceled many of them because we have no issues before us. Legally, we have to hold four meetings a year, so we had a discussion and passed a motion that we would schedule four meetings a year, and then would add additional meetings as needed as um, uh, issues arose. Um, we are going to hold them still on the second Tuesday of the month, but we'll hold them in January, March, August, and September. The reason August and September are kind of close right now is because we have a vacancy and we're hoping to get somebody to fill the vacancy and that we can discuss it and pass it on to the, uh, the council. Um, Rachel's going to be publishing this info on the village website as well as on Facebook. Also, we have an opening, obviously, since Nate Summer resigned on the Planning Commission, so if anyone's interested, and Rachel's also going to post that on Facebook. Um, my second comment is as Maggie Mall, citizen of the village of Central Lake. Um, as you know, several months ago, we had vandalism of the trees down by the gazebo, down by the city docks. One of the maple trees branches were removed, and another one was completely cut down. Um, I'd like the council to consider replacing the maple tree. Thank you. Uh, as usual, 
usual, I'm here about the softball field again. I'm Ralph Hines. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the, the council for their continued support. Um, the fence is incredible. Because of that, we were allowed to have district tournaments last year, and we've also increased our activities with a Maris Spalding tournament, which brought 10 teams to town, and it was just a great event. We actually used the Little League field and the softball field, and the comments about the softball field are overwhelming in how impressed people are the way it looks. Um, you also allowed us to raise funds, and you committed yourselves to funds, but Chris Corbett um, and Atlas Electric donated putting the speakers into the softball field. It came out great, and people, I mean, it's its really turning into quite a complex. Um, I'm here again on, on the keep improving the softball field note. Um, what I'd like, your, I'd like your permission to, uh, first of all, to put in a warning track in the outfield uh, that would require more diamond dust, and we remove the grass. I'll donate all the time with my loader. Sam says that uh, he would come up and help with his loader in a dump truck, whatever we need to get it done. Other than that, the diamond dust costs $2,500. And what I'd like your permission to do, if you'll let me put in a warning track, I'll start to try to raise money. And we've been real successful. The community steps behind this every time. Uh, even the backstop was a huge expense, and the community stepped up and paid for half of that. And you guys matched the other half of the backstop when the fence was put in. Um, I think we can get the community to stand behind it again, but I need your permission before, I'm not going to go to somebody and hit them up for money before I have your permission to make an improvement. So um, that's where we're at right now, and hopefully we can raise the whole $2,500 and get it done. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sam, you're up. Hi, I'm Sam Kelly. Any other public comment? Susie. I would, I would like to um, say thank you for putting this on the agenda for improvement to the tennis courts and basketball courts and stuff. Um, I contacted Rachel probably, I don't know, a month or six weeks ago because it was a conflict. We didn't know who owned it, if it was the village or the school. And I would like to see that on the agenda because the Central Lake Chamber was approached um, about having like basketball, three on three basketball and stuff there. So I'm, I'm happy to see that on there to see more activity up in that area. Thank you. I just want to say that at the Planning Commission meeting last night, we also um, asked Maggie to be our chairperson and she graciously accepted. So thank you, Maggie. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Maggie. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> it took a lot. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? And we close public comment. Please report, Scott. Thank you. Hopefully, everybody got a chance to look at um, this month's report. Um, pretty typical month. Um, kind of the highlights of the month were. Fourth of July went very well. It seems to go very well for us every year. It was a long day. Um, we had a lot of help throughout the day. Um, and um, you'll see by number two what I mean by help. Usually every year, just as a reminder, um, places like Bel Air, um, actually Bel Air, um, Elk Rapids, they always send a car over to help us with our events. So we always send a car over to help them. Um, that's one that I sent, or actually went over to myself and helped. Like so we kind of all help each other out. So by having extra people here that we don't have to pay for and that you know what to do and you know, in times of needs, it helps us out as far as taking care of everything that happens over there. So we've been very, very fortunate the last six plus years I've been here. Um, hardly any complaints or any major problems for a busy day like this. So, um, besides that, um, everything else is spelled out down here. Um, and I think that we'll talk about a couple other things that are going on. That, um, any questions? Thanks. I got one. I don't know. Okay. Did, did we want to deal with the higher level like officer? Where are we at in that process? Is it something you wanted to work at? And I, I'm sorry, I just got back from the office. It's something else, but I'll talk about why we're talking about it. Um, 
as of today, um, I've got four people that are very interested in it, and they're all four certified police officers. Two happen to be retired police officers, two of them happen to be currently working police officers, so we kind of have a, a variety of it. Um, I've only got, actually I don't have any of the applications back. They're all out, they haven't came back yet, so I would hope that within about a week or so we can actually pull those in and look at them. It kind of depends on what we're looking for. Um, I think it's important that when we find out who's all interested that we talk to them and say this is what we want as a village. We want somebody that's committed to at least eight to ten hours a week. We want you to focus specifically on um, the ordinance issues and stuff like that. And, and I think we and I had a conversation and Joe and I had a conversation so Bill and I. Um, it'll be really hard for the first four or five months I think but it'll catch up with itself and we'll get kind of it. You know, what I think is a manageable level as far as the ordinances and issues and stuff like that. The benefit about having a certified police officer as our um, enforcement officer is that when things slow down from time to time with the ordinance issues, they can just do normal patrol and stuff like that. So, um, and it doesn't increase because we already have three part time people, so this would be um, you know, just a, another person that would fill a gap. And actually, one of the people, or actually a current employee that we have, just wants the extra hours. So we may actually go down in numbers of employees, but still keep at the same hours and stuff like that. So. Okay. But um, my goal is to hopefully, the next couple weeks, look at those if they return. I'm assuming all four of them are coming back. Because um, um, I talked to each person individually, and they all express a, a high interest in doing this. Maybe sit down with Bill and the law enforcement committee and just kind of walking through those and thinking what works best for our village and for us. And then maybe we can talk about this too. I mean, do you want to come back to the next board meeting and make a decision, or do you want us to just collectively make a decision? I just put a note under the business, and we'll talk about it again about how we want to go through that process. Okay. Well, I mean, it's no big deal to me. I can do it either way. We yep. can either drag out to the next board meeting um, and bring back a name for you guys, or we can just go ahead and I, regardless of what we do, unless it's one of our current employees, I don't have to do a background. It's real simple. It's, I'll have to come to work more often. Um, the other three is just a quick background, um, which takes about maybe a week to sort of do stuff. It's not that difficult. Okay, and we'll talk about that. We're going business inside. How we want to move forward. Okay. Any questions for Scott? Okay. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. 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 Thank you know, one of the odd things on here is number 13. We took the plow truck over the dealer, the brakes are gone on it, and we tried to tear the wheel off and my three quarter inch skid back wrench wouldn't even take the lug nuts off. But, so at that point, I kind of said, I don't know what to do with this truck, so we took it over to Gaylord. Still, it's sitting over there getting the brake job done on it right now. And number 16, the water fit that we had brought to the council last month. We showed you guys a water study, I believe. And I got that. I don't think you were here. 15, 15, excuse me. I, I got the number wrong. That's all, 15. Anyways, I got the bid back from Elmer's. And the numbers come back quite shocking to me. And one of the things I realized was on Three of the houses on Herrick Street that we are talking about doing directional bores to them houses, Elmer's come back with a bid of $45 a foot for a directional bore. Chase Bennington in Bel Air from Freedom Utilities can do it for $8 a foot. I had him in town last week and we went over and looked at it. In all total, to do them bores, and to hook them free water services to the new main in the house in Elmer, Elmer's bid would be about $39,000. And I believe if we paid Chase Bennington to do them three boards, which would be about $8,000, that we would have approximately $12,000 if the DPW hooked them three up themselves, totally. So at this point, I would like to table that water project till next year, since we're so late in year now. But authorize Chase Bennington to do their directional growth, their directional bores. So yet this fall, when I get a free day, we can run in there and hook the water, switch the water services over. How many, how many services was it? Three of them. Three. There's three of them for a total of close to a thousand people. 
And also at Elmer's bit, I got reading it, that says they took the measurements off Google Earth. Well, Chase and me wheeled them off, and they're 330 feet. They only have 700 feet bid off Google Earth. Well, if I do, and I know it's 330 feet to the very first one, standbacks. And Caramelli's is 330 feet because it's the right across from each other. So I know Elmer's would be billing us out for close to 1,000 feet because it says in here, measurements are took off Google Earth and you will be billed for actual footage. So that bill would go up to $45,000 just for the three boards. We will just pay off the board. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like to have permission to hire Chase Bennington, Freedom Utilities, to do the directional boards at $8 a foot. And then when we get time, put them in. And that's cost savings to the village of just about $28,000 off the cost of that total project. That's a lot of money. That's it for my report. Any questions? Any questions for Sam? Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Campground flat. Well, we're busy all the month of July. Very busy. Since June 15th through today, we've been almost full. <laughs> the last four, we've had six, seven weeks. We're down to uh, 21 uh, units in there right now. We've got more coming in tomorrow and uh, Saturday. We're going to be up with about uh, 27, 28 units for this week again. So it's going. We had a lock break on the bathroom. Sam and I uh, cut it off in the ladies' bathroom. And we proceeded to order uh, two combination locks for the bathroom. We've got one installed, and uh, I'll install the other one next week when it's a little bit quieter. Those are coated now? Coated. Yes. They worked out real nice. Yeah, I think they're going to work out all right once we get a program like they should be at some point. I think they're going to work all right. They're electronic uh, battery operator. I, I have all the information on so that if we do do our other bathrooms down the road and the grant, we can order the same type of box. Other than that, cut the grass, clean the fire pits, and so forth. I think that's very busy. Well, the park's looking great, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Bob? Thank you, Al. Rachel, fill in the history. Just to bear with me, I'm not used to talking about other groups of people. Um, other than the everyday paying bills and writing free text and answering phones, um, it's been pretty busy. The audit is back. Everything's good. There's going to be some minor changes in the recording of the utility zone. Um, all the ordinances have been published. They are accessible. All the bank records up to date. As far as the lot next to the Albany State Bank, we have the deed that has been signed. Um, the boardwalk, I have done all the research to figure out um, all the people that are living in the Western family who have a deed to the property on the boardwalk. And I've pinned down all the family members and I've just need to get all the contact information and send that over to the, the attorney. Um, the water billing readings are done, and I'm in the middle of printing the bills, so we'll be going out next week. Um, I intend to do the meeting, and Corey will also be speaking about what happened next. Thank you. Any questions for you? Thank you. Corey, DA. Yeah. DA. Yeah. Um, Okay. I'll give you a little brief of this the project we're working on right now. Uh, downtown development plan is coming along. Uh, four of us met a little over a month ago to put something together there. Uh, hopefully at this next meeting we can have something to present and start showing. Uh, we're currently working 
trying to get towards working on our TIF plan. Um, we're currently also working on the open space downtown, the space between Mission Computers and Patent Insurance. Uh, that project's, uh, I, I don't have a DTA on it, but it, it should be soon. Chris Corbett's setting that up. Uh, two members of the DDA and one member of the chamber attended the Michigan Main Street training last Tuesday. Um, where we've got lots of very good information. Uh, one of the things that came out of that is to make sure that the DDA has a good working relationship with the Village Council, and so hopefully be added, we can be added to the agenda every month and give some kind of report. Um, and then the, uh, the last meeting, we also appointed Nancy Bridges uh, to a four-year term, we're hoping that That'll be a recommendation that we'll recommend to the village council. Hopefully, they'll approve that. Uh, Nancy's a relatively new to the area. She's been here since, I want to say, last fall. And she has eight years in grant writing experience um, and served on many different boards. Uh, according to, uh, she wrote a short bio. I don't know if that ended up, they ended up getting that. Uh, her and her husband have written over $4.7 million for the grants. Uh, and that is all I have for right now. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. Correspondent. I have a couple that I know of. The first one is a notice for the Michigan Municipal League annual meeting. I, I won't read the whole thing. It honestly is a couple pages long. The meeting is scheduled for 1.15 a.m. on Thursday, October 16th in the Lakes Ballroom at the Northern Michigan University. It's held for the following purpose. Election of trustees. Vote on the core legislative principles document. If the league board of trustees has presented any resolutions to the membership, it will also be voted on. Designation of voting delegates. Election of trustees. Statements of policies and resolutions. Posting of proposed resolutions and core legislative principles. So, I have that. Anybody interested in voting, let me know. The second one is from the Michigan Municipal League. The Dear League member, we want to thank you for your continued commitment to the Michigan Municipal League. It closes your 2014 15 membership certificate, which we hope you will display proudly. It is because of your support that the League is able to advocate successfully for communities across Michigan. The League is the one clear voice for Michigan communities. We are here to aid you through our legislative and judicial advocacy, our educational opportunities for elected and appointed officials, and our many service offerings. We hope you will take full advantage of our League membership by exploring all that we have to offer. And then we'll let they give you their contact information. Any questions on that? that. Any the only other things I have was through the audit, which Rachel touched on, which went really good. Always minor recommendations, always the same minor recommendations, and they always come out fine. So, okay. thank you. Keep that in order. I think that audio went great. That is all I have for correspondence. Any questions? Any reports? Rob? Uh, let's see. Lights? Find nothing going on with that. Uh, sidewalks, I put a handout in front of the, the door there. Um, it's just a breakdown. If somebody wanted to replace 100 feet of sidewalk in front of their residence, um, what the cost would be and the exact breakdown of how much it would cost that homeowner. Because again, with the insurance, we have to take sidewalks out. And there was some question as to um, if this homeowner wanted to do it on their own, how much it would cost. So Sam and I sat down. And we line itemed it, and it's there for you. And to replace 100 feet of sidewalk at five feet wide is $1,421.50. And we're going to keep this on file uh, with Rachel. So that way, if anybody asks, they have it right there. And if they, they can measure out their own a lot and determine if it's something that would be applicable to them. Uh, streets, uh, Sam touched on water. Um, we really can't move on streets until the water lines and borings are in. Um, we don't want to start putting down new pavement and then going in directional bore and undermine the road and crack the road. So as soon as we start the directional bores and those are completed, then we can start looking at paving 
or resurfacing, I should say, Herrick and Bradford. So this, at this point, we're on hold until we get that project all done, sewn up, and out of the way. Because I don't want <coughs> trucks and everything else driving on a newly paved road and having four up. Oh, uh, that's it. Any questions? Uh, I just one quick question. Number four on your labor costs. Yep. It's eight days at seventy-three dollars per day. That, that's actually ten hours. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Eight hours. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to ask that. One. I was going to wait for that. You were really cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no reflecting your tax. No, I, I actually was saying it was three guys that it, 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 a day's labor, but okay. I'll fix that in some minutes of rage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Denise, water and sewer. Thanks, Sam's got a little control. I don't, um, anything else you need to talk about, Sam? We're good. Any questions? Thank you. Bill, law enforcement. Chief, talk about the part time. And uh, we have a windshield and a chip in on the tow car. We got that in. And working on a grant for the new tow car for next year, 15. And the uh, possibility of getting uh, anywhere from 40 to 55 percent grant. Website, there will be a tab on there, you can go and watch the minutes once they're downloaded. Any questions for Rob? Thank you, Rob. If I could touch on Big Scrap, just saying I worked with Rachel a little bit here this last week on it, and our initial thoughts is to take where the old audio used to be, mm -hmm. remove the audio, yeah, put the video, so it will now be your minutes and then video beside that instead of audio. And I believe Rachel's already uploaded one. That we did a while ago, and <coughs> go now move a little forward quickly with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, finance and personnel. All right. Um, other than the audit and touch base with, um, we're going to talk about selling the 2007 Ford a little later. Um, Rachel did do some background checking with uh, an issue that came to our attention again last month with the phone number for the Thurston Park. She has come back with it, with an answer that until the new publications and phone books come out, there's really not a lot we can do. Uh, we are going to make another phone call to ensure that we can, or try to ensure that we can hold the existing number, but we don't know that that's going to be a possibility. So we'll check into that. Um, again, can touch base on the audit. Um, the reservation system down in campground Poland for next year, there are 28 people who paid in full for their next year's reservation. There's 18 people who have used the $100 deposit for next year. We have three people that we need to get a hold of and contact for something. And I bring that to the board here. Tonight that there is one for $331. There was no $100 deposit made and this reservation was made on 7-14 of 2014. So we need to set a policy, in my opinion, that says they either make their deposit in a certain amount of time or they lose that reservation. And I think that's only something that we need to do because we could sit there and lose right across the board on that one. There's also another one here for $586 in the same scenario and another one for $66. When are they coming out? Next year. <laughs> Ooh, uh, um, where are they? I'll begin with you after the meeting. I don't think I'm waiting to know the names on that necessarily, but they're just ones that well, I think it's more of a policy issue that we need to set that there was either, I thought we had that in place, but apparently <coughs> some things can slip through the cracks because these three have. Um, Rachel brought them today for me and popped them into me. 
if I'm right, we do have a policy on this one. I'm sure between you guys, we'll, we'll okay. work it out after the meeting, right? Well, yeah, yeah. And we got phone being, number. Oh. Yeah, it might be okay. Lyle okay. calling and saying, or, or we'll we'll back. Back. we all understand the policy. So okay. yeah. Next. Like you said. Um, really, that, that's all I have then for, for my report right now. Okay. Any questions for Joe? Thank you, Joe. Leland, you know, Park and Public Property? Uh, our committee went up to Donaldson Park the other day and checked over everything. And I think you've got it down for action on new business. But uh, we decided it should be tabled because we're not ready. We don't have all the stuff together that we need. Because we wanted to get some bids on resurfacing some of the, uh, the basketball court resurfacing it and the paint on the one. Uh, we talked about the tennis court, new nets, resurface or paint that or two in. Of course, we do have to re remove uh, that equipment that the kids play on out there, not in the courts, but it's not safe. And the insurance company, we're waiting to hear back from them whether or not we can maintain that one unit or not. But we're going to find out. Basically, that is it. <coughs> President's report. I just have a few related questions. I've had the paper in front of me for motions where we've talked about we're just going to finally do it. If you make a motion, you write it down on the paper, you write down the actual motion that we pass, and then we hand that to Rachel at the end of the meeting that shows who made it, who seconded it, and, and the actual wording of the motion is agreed and we'll pass it. So we just save all that confusion and go back looking through the listening to the audio and everything to sort through it. So I know it'll slow it down a little bit at the time. But I think overall it will just work out a lot better. Um, probably a couple weeks ago, we were notified that our ADA parking places in town were not properly marked. I think Sam's already dealing with it. One is upright, one post, one sign. The problem is they're they're painted. There has to be a, a sign up designating them as ADA parking. So the one is up, correct? The other one will be going up soon? Tomorrow morning. Okay, and then. Uh, and then we'll have one more going in down by the doctor's office. I'm waiting on the decorative pole to get there. Okay. And then we will put up, we will mark and put up a sign in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Radiate parking there. We'll be we'll be more than likely do one at the village office. We're just covering everywhere we can think of. Um, I think the village market, not that we control it, but they are they are in the process of wording a sign or doing it. So it's, it's already up. So it's been discussed around town. I the person I thank the person that brought it to our attention because it's just kind of been an oversight over the years and it's been correct. So I thank everybody for helping with that. Um, I don't know if everybody knows, but the DPW replaced the pavilion, the handrail down by the pavilion before the whole war fest. And it just looks great. So thank you. It's one of those things you look at every day when you really stop and look at it, you think we, we need to replace it. So Sam and the guys went down and did it. And, I think and the water was great. Yep. And that's that excellent. Was they fixed the water leak down there, which has been an issue for a while now. Years. So it's, it's fixed. It's, it's much nicer now. So the whole area is nicer. Um, as far as water goes, up by the softball field on the back side of the field between there and the bus garage. Sam dealt with that. Correct? We tried. Coming up again? Come up yes. again. You should have told me that before I was on the I know what I did before I was on the Okay. I'm so I'm we are, I'm that with you on that we are continuing to work on it. What we did was we tiled it into an area where there was a bunch of snow in there to see if that would accept the water. And it did for probably how long? What, five days? Six days? Yep. So as we've talked about quite a while, if need be, it will be tiled all the way down to the drainage ditch. We just can't have that water running through there flooding that, that whole area of parks and everything. So it's a work in progress. But it, it may end up all the way down there to, tell me the name of the street, Howard, Howard Street, and through the drainage ditches. But oh, Thank you for the docks in the meantime. Yep, we'll continue to, but, but that's not a joke. They put up docks to get across yeah. the river. So we kind of like to have an underground river. <laughs> that would be good. So we're working at it. So it's, we're moving in that direction. Um, do you want to discuss baggers for the lawnmowers? Do we want to just start in the new business? Oh, new business? Or new business? It's under new business. Okay, I'll let that go. Um, the new benches finally came in. I don't know if I saw it on the Facebook post. So Sam already got those down there into the park and moved the park benches downtown for more seating downtown. So that went good. Rachel mentioned that the bank lot is now the village owned lot. So if the council agrees, we probably can discuss it right now. I just think for the time being now, we just have to BPW keep the lot up and keep it mowed. There's a 
lot of talk about what should be done. It, it's a truly a DDA discussion. But for now, I think our DPW should keep the mode looking back. And we need to do some terminology. Yep, yep. So we'll, we'll, we'll clean it up. It'll be, uh, it'll be a lot. And over the next, I don't know how many months, we can have lots of ideas on what we're going to do with that. Um, Rachel touched on she's dealing with the north end of the lake and the Rushton family, and that should be over to the attorney's office sometime next week, probably. And they'll proceed with that. Um, help me on this one, Rachel. We got the foreclosure deed back from the, the piece of property we purchased under tax foreclosure from the state. We have the deed right, and we're contacting Sean yes. on that piece. Yes, Yep, so we just have to transfer over him and let them deal with title insurance on it. If, if they do. Okay, and um, after, so everybody knows after we had the survey done on that north end of the lake, we found the two property lines, it became evident there's a dock that's been put in by a private property owner on village property, so they've been notified that that dock is going to come out. And we have not heard from as of yet, but there's a notice posted there, and they've received a letter stating they have 10 days to contact the village, and the dock will be removed because it is on village property. So anybody drives by and sees a notice, that's what that is. So we are dealing with that. That is all I have. Any questions? Thank you. We want to approval of bills. And accept a motion for prepaid bills in the amount of $30,815.81. Payroll in the amount of $5,835.45. Payables in the amount of $20,794.10 for total approved bills of $57,445.36. Make a motion to pay the bills as presented. Motion by Bodley. Second by Chapman. Any other discussion? Roll call, please, Rachel. Yes. Yes. Chapman. Yes. 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 Passes. Thank you. My new business, purchase a commercial grade bagger. You want to talk on that, Sam? Let me do it. Well, I, I think there were, what happened was we had the Open Fest was on Saturday, that Saturday. And what we did out of the ordinary is we've never bagged the, the park. So I told Jeff, I said, go ahead and grab that bagger out of, for a while. He's got a little more of a little bagger. Well, let's bag all the grass so we don't leave the windrows. Well, the first thing everybody came back to me and started saying was, what would you do different down to the park? And we bagged all the grass. Everybody noticed that. Yeah. And when they started saying that to me, that's why I come back to Ken and said, what do you think the odds are we can buy a commercial bagger for one of our bigger tractors, not Lyle's, because Lyle's is such a small one. Jeff would make one and a half passes and fill his bagger up. So that's why I come back to Ken and said, and with everybody noticing it, and I'm telling you what, it really made park look nice. It really does make a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from, this, from here on, I'd love to start being able to make that park. I didn't think it would make that much of a difference, but it did. How much did one cost? Uh, we, I thought about one for our Braveway Zero turn, and that was anywhere from 28 to 3500 depending on. And then I got thinking, the Zero turn may get stuck where it's wet down by the lake, so, but we got a big John Deere that we actually mow through the wet spot with because it's got some big wide wheels. So I went up to the working toy shop and talked to Mike up there and they come back with a 14 bushel one for $1,700 brand new. And it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. We have a, a, what they call a, a lawn back, that you, like a DR, you see them advertising, you hook them up to a hitch. It needs a lot of work on it, but I'm afraid we won't be able to pull it through the wet spot. Were you able to get that on there? I don't know. We didn't work out today because of the benches and the handicap signs and everything else on there. We worked at it for, I think I got four hours into it right now. And we still don't have it run. And truthfully, when John Deere said, yeah, we can come up with one for 1700 bucks, that kind of made me even rethink about, am I going to fix this old white one we've had for 40 years? So my brother took Ken's attention. That's why we're here. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I think of um, what do we think about? Well, I want to make sure I have all my numbers correct. <laughs> so, 
So CME stated 2800 to 3500 for the zero turn mower bag, correct? How many courses was that? Uh, it's anywhere from 10 to 14. But this has limited use down by the water. Correct. It's zero turn mowers, when you, when you transfer the power, the other wheel's going to spin. When you get the water, to, to be honest with you, every zero turn we've had in Central Lake, we pulled it out of the lake two to three, four uh -huh. times. Well, that's not really Each good. guy that's been using it. Yeah. Not, I mean, a zero turn, that's not even really, it's not enough necessity really down in that area anyway, is it? No. In, in, it's not a zero turn environment. Right. You can do that with any tractor. Right. I'm talking 1800 bucks from top dollar of the zero turn to the, and they're the same size. So then the other one was, you stated two numbers, 1400 to 1700. No, 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 it is 1700. What oh, is 1700? That's a 14 bushel. That's a 14, a 14 bushel three bag. And that one's for the tractor. Right. And that's for the big John Deere tractor that we have. And can you use the big John Deere tractor up by the pavilion as well? Yes. All right. But it used to be the only power we had until we bought the zero turn. So how big would you say Lyle Bagger is? Just, just tell me the difference mm -hmm. about seven. Yeah. Of seven. Yeah. So we double it? Yeah, you're doubling the size. That's the biggest we can get for with a 52 inch motor deck that will mount on the back of ours. I'd love, I'd love to wait those bags. I think we have to come away to bag. <laughs> my way is, um, Unfortunately, I shouldn't bag. No. Well, it made a big difference. It does. It does make a big yeah, difference. Yeah, it just looks yeah. so nice. But yeah. I mean, it takes up all the room. I mean, it's everything. How, everything else, too. Well, it's cleaner. How would that work compared to if, if we had the vacuum system going? I can't say that. The, the vacuum system that we have, if, if everything run, is going to collect a whole lot. But it's probably 30 bushel. Because it has its own chopper built right in it to knock everything down. But you're taking that's a 40 year old machine, too. What does that run with, like a 10 horse bridge or something? Like it's got 11 horse bridge and Stratton independent motor on it. Yep. Which is probably a five six thousand dollar No, it's probably, you'd probably buy the motor for 800 bucks. I mean, I mean, if you went on what a new A whole new system? Uh, yes. I, I don't know, DR, I don't know what they get for. It's probably $3,000. But then you're pulling the big old holes with you, now you've got to be careful you can't get close to You're definitely going to have to put different tires in the wheel now. Yeah. Something's going to adapt to the moisture. And the, just the chute was $280 to get a chute to hook up from our, our John Deere tractor to a 7 inch hose, because that's a 7 inch intake hose goes to that motor. Yeah. Will the John Deere mow off Donaldson Field? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that mows. And we, that's all we used until we bought the zero turn. Pretty soon we'll be bagging the whole time. And see, the only time it's an issue on emptying the bags is that one spot in the camp, in the day park. Because that's that's where it's really what The Donaldson field, we can probably mow all the softball field before we even empty the bag. So so you're only talking two, three times you're bagging it because we get to it more often, the grass don't grow as long, as thick, as heavy. And there through Thurston Park, it's wet, so the grass grows really good and real thick. Beautiful grass. Money in your budget? It's an equipment fund. I'll, I'll go back to that, but you know how that goes. If we, if, if a truck, I got a truck in Gaylord right now, I can't tell you for sure what it's going to cost to get fixed. For me to say it's in my budget, no. It, I can say it is now, but if I get my truck back and then something else happens, then we're not, <coughs> not in my budget. Definitely. It's not a budgeted item, Mr. Cruz. I, okay. <laughs> How's that? It's the middle of August. Six weeks, seven. Something like that. I don't know if that's until spring 2015. I don't know. Do we need dagger right now? Yeah. That's for you guys to make that decision. How does that work on leaves? Excellent. Same as a dozen grass. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
suggest that we, if we're going to do it, and I think we should, that we should do it before fall so that you have it for the fall cleanup. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's my thought. Why, why wait if we're going to do it? I'll say like always, do a reduction at the moment. I, 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 I was absent there for a little bit of your conversation. You talked some about the back trailer also, and you everybody has come back to the defense so far as the back is the way to go. Compared to a uh, very old vacuum system that doesn't work. And so then I would ask, I guess, just that question is what's the process of that? And would it be more versatile? Would it not be? Besides, Sam, I had this conversation with Sam earlier, too. And we just, you know, they, they actually they asked me that too. And I, to me, to pull up behind you with that big old seven inch hose sticking up and it's going to be inconvenient. Okay. But it, it's very cumbersome. That's what it's brought to this board to do the same direction. No, I'm looking at it. No, you put it in the draft. This is so small. Well, since it's an improvement on the park, I would like to make a motion to go with that bagger. For the John Deere. I'll second that. We've got to throw out our motion sheet. Stick to our plan. Leave it. There's a reason to move it. I knew that. This will work out good. Trust me. This will work out good. Trust me. This will work out good. Who's going to move first? Everybody's looking down. All right. <laughs> just so we get our time, one person. It, we're going to get used to the front a lot better. I just want to bring down. Yes. 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 To purchase a seventeen hundred dollar bagger for the John Deere tractor. Right. That from a working place. Yeah. From a working place. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Leela. We're off to a good start. <laughs> the second item, and I'll just touch on it real fast. I know we talked about it. I, 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 once they get all the prices back, we'll get through the tennis court, the basketball courts, the playground equipment. It's all up in the air now. Nobody wants to guess at the price. Nobody wants about playground equipment. At that point, and it, I'm sure the prices will come back pretty quick, it might be worth looking at a grant yet in this grant cycle because we have until April of the goal to do Michigan National Resources Trust Fund. And if it comes up to a substantial amount of money, it might be removed for improvements to the park system. So let's keep moving forward. We get the numbers and we decide if we want to go through that process. I would, I would say yes, unless it's, I think it's going to be expensive to do the whole project. I think there's, there's more than just the DNR trust fund grant to it. There's place making needs and different ones. I doubt it would fall under that. I doubt it would fall under that. Okay. I doubt it. But, so just so we know, we should keep that in the back of our mind and move forward on that. Anybody have any other new business? Then we will move on to action items. Approve the sale of the 2007 Ford pickup. As you all know, we, we kept the truck, seeing if it would be feasible for the DPW to have an additional truck. And they tried it, and it truly isn't. And correct me if I'm wrong, it is, but it just, it just didn't prove to be feasible to keep another truck for, for that purpose. But are there times we could use one? Yes. If you look at it over the whole season of the year, not in our small little village. It just, it just didn't work out. So our and I talked about it, we thought we should just sell it and move on. Um, my recommendation would be we sell it with the plow on it. The plow is how many years old, Sam? Four, 13 or 14 years old. And it had repair work last year. It's going to need repair work again this year for bushings and stuff. So I, I think everybody had this. No, you're the only one. Okay. That. So Sam priced, if we could do that, what would it cost to purchase a new plow? So I'll tell you that. The one with stainless, we'll just go, hey, I'll give you both the prices. Anyway, we, we purchased them through the state program. Through Western, yeah. Right, which gives us a very good discount. Yeah. So, the 8038 plow, the village could buy for $4,850. The other one was stainless, is that correct? Stainless, stainless too. $8,634 plow that we could buy for $5,150. My personal thought was, like I said, that we sell the truck with a plow on it. 
you know, purchase a new pile with a new crop. Eventually, everything has a life cycle, and it, it piles a lot of snow. It's not like we have two of them sitting around. We I wrote down Polly after talking to you, yeah. So I guess, what's our thoughts on should we sell the truck? It currently sits idle. Right, yeah. So we, we're all wrong. Do I agree we should yeah. sell the truck? We tried it, we just, it just didn't work. The second question, should we sell the truck with a plow on it? It makes it more desirable. Right? I, I think it does. Like I said, if the plow was three years old, I might sit here and argue we should keep the darn thing. Yeah, we're all set. Okay, I'm not anyway. We're still separately. Right. So, the discussion is my. This I'm just going to say with my opinion. Last time, we could go through bids on the truck. My thought was, let's decide what we think the truck is worth and let's sell it. Let's, let's not make it all cumbersome. Let's pick a price, put the truck up for sale, and sell. So, well, Kevin can you with that? Quick, I print it off. Just like it's for sale. Everybody should have in their back back back. best offer. Or no, I think we should. Don't, my, don't think, sell it if you don't get it. But that would be my. We decide that's how much we want for the truck, and we put a price on it. If we don't sell it, then we'll sit there and have this discussion again. If you'd rather go through bids, say so. Myself, I think it's a big cumbersome process to sell it. And then I know we'll always get the best price. Joe, so, so. Well, with that being said, when it came to me, I went on Kelly Blue Book and I printed off um, all conditions of that truck. And then the Kelly Blue Book says fair condition, good condition, very good condition, and excellent condition. And um, so that, that pretty much gives us all, all scenarios. Um, Fair condition at the lowest point of Kelly Blue Book uh, says the truck is worth $8,786. In excellent condition, it says it's worth $99.72. Um, it, it would be my recommendation before we actually um, sold the truck that we did have it detailed first and the stickers removed from it. I think that that would bring to the appeal of the truck for anybody trying to buy one. But. Uh, Looking at the pricing and, and where it's at, I looked at the truck a little bit with Sam the other day. It's still in pretty good shape. We know that it's had body work done on it. Sam had the lower ends done, the lockers, the, the fender wells. Um, they were all done and, and had a um, rock guard put on the lower portion of the truck. So And it's still in pretty good shape. You can find a couple small rust spots on it, but still all in all is in pretty good shape. Now this number doesn't include the plow though. It doesn't include the plow. So what do we think? What's the whole number with the plow and the truck? Honestly, my opinion is 95 would be the would be, a, would be a top and with the plow. That's that's just my opinion on the truck. Um, I've talked to a couple of guys who thought that was a little high, but they want the truck also. So I think the I think the fact that it's had a plow on it is a, it, it would cause a detriment to the price. It wouldn't be. A, wouldn't be an increase in price at all. I think when talking with Ken, talking with Sam, both of them looked at the truck as in good condition, in between right. good and, and fair. By the way, I kind of blew up there too. Yeah. So didn't, we did that with, didn't we put a kind of blue up with a plow over there? We put a plow over there. Remember, there was always that little confusion about it. Oh, I think it was just plow over there. I kind of blew up there. put this plow over there. Plow, that was what I meant. Because yeah. there's so many different plows, I don't know how they could put a price yeah. on that. It might have been plow ready. That's what I'm. It's a use, plow pack. Used plows at the dealership when you take a used truck there are five hundred dollars. That's no signal. Okay, that's, that's period. That's and I that's a Boss V plow which is top of the line, and they said five hundred bucks. Okay, thank you. It's a Western PDL. So even even if we said nine thousand with the plow, we're not hurting. But how fast do you want to sell it? I'm thinking tomorrow. Uh, I'm <laughs> well, I'd like to. But if you find one of the don't. Yeah, but put it down at the price where you think somebody yeah. would grab it up. Why can't you do like starting at nine thousand and the best bid over nine grand gets it? Because then you go into the bidding. We're talking about setting a solid price, and that's it. That's what we want right. for right now. If we were in the bidding process, you'd be right. But this 
we're looking, if I'm correct, is setting the price, and that's what we pay for. So if we said nine, first nine thousand gets it. If we said nine five, so it's nine thousand miles. We're not taking nine, we're not taking the higher bidder after that. If that's the direction that we're looking at doing right now. All right, so let's say we put it out for nine thousand dollars. How long are we going to keep it out there for nine thousand dollars? We need a procedure to follow. My recommendation wouldn't be any more than the next council meeting. If it ain't sold by then, we're going to look at a, either dropping the price or going to bid. So nine thousand dollars for one month. What's our procedure after this one month period of time, what are we going to do? It will come back in. My, this is just so our are you going to revisit the issue? You revisit whether you want to drop the price or you want to take the bid. Okay. I mean, that, that would be my opinion on it. So we're just going to re reevaluate the situation at the September meeting. If it hasn't sold. If it hasn't sold. All right. And how are we going to advertise? Normal steps. Facebook. Great. So let's get something in the... Yeah. Um, Newspaper I mean, well, Craigslist is free. Oh, yeah. You can Yeah. How are you going to advertise around it? <laughs> Facebook, Craigslist. Anything yeah. yeah. don't cost us a dime to advertise. Just sign up on it, put it up on the road. Yeah. Okay. And it doesn't cost us any amount of money to advertise. By, by we, he means. Well, I, I want to be, I guess my first motion would be in, um, to send the truck to have a detail before sale. With the stickers removed. And, and remove the stickers. And Sam, can you do that up to Charlotte by then and take care of that? So I would make a motion to send the 2007 Ford F-250 for detailing and removal of stickers. Motion to Bobby. You got a price Yeah. I believe it. I believe um, Charlotte Boy car detailing, whatever the guy's name is, there. I, I used him for, I believe he's $135. I want to say so. I say that is no detail, though. What about take? Well, we could actually take decals off of the book or just not pull it out. Yeah, but we could if he's there detailing about it's really that much more work for him, but you know, we can take him off and we want to pay for it. Can't pay you. That's all right, not cheap. Home model of housing kind of problem Okay, so my motion is to send a 2004 F two fifty to have it detailed. All right. Motion by Bob. Second, by Tyler. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. Thank you, Joe. So does that mean we brought a new bomb too? We're now in the We're in the bar. 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 We're in We're just getting one cleaned right now. We ain't sold it. You have got, I need to put that up. Um, do you need a motion for selling the truck? Yeah, now you have a second motion. I'll just tell us a second motion. Am I making the second motion? Okay. Sorry. Right. Mike, right. I, um, I will make it. First of all, Sam, you already removed the stickers then, so I don't have to make a motion that way. Okay. 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 Um, then I will make a motion to sell the 2004 F 250 with the plow. Nice. Right. I'm, I'm ready, guys. Right now, 2007. Seven, yeah. Yeah. That's what I said, right? No. Sure. <laughs> what did I say? Okay, 2007. Ford. F-250. What's plow? For $9,500. I thought it was $9,000. Who's making this motion? I voted. You said it again. I voted nine thousand. Nine thousand. Want to pass? <laughs> Make up my mind, would you? Yes. Okay. Okay. To sell the F, the Ford F, Ford two thousand and seven Ford Search F two fifty Ford and five hundred nine thousand dollars for swag. Motion by Bobby, second by Clark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Um. I think that's a given. Oh, we just sold right away. <laughs> 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 we're going to get a new plow. I got it. Might be <laughs> 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 I'm going to get a new plow. I got it. Might be. Just. Sure. 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 Sure
It's in the budget, right? Yeah. 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 There will be in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Just so we don't need that. What's that? Engine on something. Yes. Okay. My action item B is approve the capitalization policy for the village. I want to explain to you how that came about. When the auditors were here, I forget what we talked about. Maybe the street paid or something, and I asked Ryan, at what point does that become a capital approval project, and at what point is it a maintenance project? He says, well, it states that in capitalization policy. We both had the same look. <laughs> he said, would you like one? I said, yes. He said, you should have one. So they prepared one and sent it to us. And basically, in a nutshell, what a capitalization policy is, this is something I'll read you from accounting tools. It's a policy used by a company to set a threshold above which qualifying expenditures are recorded as fixed assets and below which they are charged as expense has occurred. So it just gives the auditor's way and us a way to know, is it a capital improvement or is it an expense? Something we probably should have had right along every business has it. So I think you'll have a copy of it in front of you. Pretty Everybody got a copy, right, Rachel? Yeah. Yep, so it, was, it was prepared by Bear Cotter Bishop for us to use. So if you want to have any discussion on it. Since this is a rather broad policy and not quite um, indicative just essentially the village, I should say. Should we get more, look at it more closely later with part of the rest of the book? Well, we, so, I mean, that's why I was in the packet. To be honest, it was in the packet to make a look at it so we could discuss it. Okay. If we have any questions, let's bring them up and we'll okay. discuss it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we, like I said, the fire risk equipment should be taken off. But, you know what I mean? I don't know if it matters that it is on there. We don't have it. No, I don't. You know, I, I just asked the question. Yeah, no, I agree. I, should be. I just want to get it done. I didn't say that other than that. Yeah, you that's right. It's a pretty broad point for what they do. So they do a lot of, a lot of municipalities here in Cotter Division does. A lot of big corporations the school. Nothing we can't change at a later date, you know what I mean? Which I'm sure over over time there will be recommendations from them to change some things. Because yeah, there are some things here, like the fire system. I tried, I had the same question as Joe too, but I thought it doesn't it doesn't hurt to have it on there. Mm, no, I yep. don't. And I think you can start to fine tune that later too, as you have with other.
biography that Corey put together on it in front of you. Actually, she put it. She put it together. It's very, it looks great. I mean, the media is happy with it. They just asked me else to approve it. Fair new member. I did most of my title have sheet. You might pull. I will make a motion to approve Nancy Bridges to the DBA. Lord. by Cruzy, second by Clark, to approve Nancy Bridges to the DBA. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Ralph, what's that thing on the softball field called? Warning track. Warning track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I had to put it so many times. You put that up there, where's it going to go? Just like in professional baseball, they got the dirt around the grass by the fence. I'm curious to know how we're going to do that with all that water and get that water out. Well, it's on the inside. It's on the inside. The inside. The inside. The inside. The inside. Of the outfield of the on the fence line of the outfield. Yeah. Doesn't have anything to do with water. Yeah. I was going to say, Six as long as we have that flooding in the spring. Uh, the central, the central is nine feet, and I kind of figure if we copy a college field, we're doing okay. Are you, are you asking permission to do this and we cover whatever you can't raise? No, what, I, what I'm asking permission to do is solicit funds for this. I don't want to go around and say, Ken Cruz, you give me 100 bucks to help improve the softball field. If then I come to the village and say, you can't do that. I don't care how much money you have. Total cost was 2500 2500 yeah. But if we do pass it, we have to realize that we're, we're probably agreeing to cover any difference there is because if Ralph raises 2000 and I don't think we say no. You know what I'm saying? Then I will probably get you out. Yeah, yes. yes. I don't want to lie. Look, look, look. Yeah. Is, oh, no. Go ahead, bro. We never got the bill for the thousand dollars we approved for the speakers, though, did we? Yeah. Or eight hundred? Is eight hundred? So, at eight hundred going towards the speakers, that was. We never got billed because that was all donated. It was right. all donated. Yeah. So we approved it here. Yes. So, so it was approved. So I, I don't see the problem. I think it's a great idea. I mean, the, the, computer, the community supports everything financially. I mean, they really step up behind the softball field. Oh, yeah. I'm proud of it. It's been a great group. They really have that whole area. You made your brother do the wiring. Yeah, I think I'll have to do it. Another prep thing he was scared or something? I don't Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Motion right there. Uh, second. second by Chapman. To probably going to order this ride. To uh, yeah. authorize yeah. Ralph to solicit funds for a morning track at the ball field. Perfect. Yeah. Can before any work is done or before it proceeds, would you then come back to us and say, I'm lacking 400, I'm lacking 500? Hopefully, I would come back and say, we want to start tomorrow. That, that, that would be wonderful. Yeah. I'd like to see that. But before you did start any work in time with council to monies, you would come back to us for a scrap. Oh, I would not. Yeah, definitely. Okay. definitely. So this isn't going to happen until next month, or do you want to go? Um, I mean, if he, like, if he prepares all the funding to do it, yeah. so yeah, if I secure the funding and yeah. Sam yeah. has yeah. enough time with his loader to give me a hand, you know, I, I go forward right away if that's all right. I mean, so out of pocket is it <clears throat> right now? Yeah. Or we don't want to well, truly very much we're going to offer it and they'll do the work. If he, if he I, I will not start if I don't have all the money, period. Okay? Because I'm not going to order uh, diamond dust and then not be able to pay for it. I, I won't do that. I'm not going to put myself, because then I'm responsible, you guys aren't, if I order Diamond Dust. I mean, so I'm, I, I won't let you out to hang. If it takes another meeting, so, and I, if I come to you and I say I've got $2,300 or whatever, you know, I need $200, bucks. i will talk to you. I'm not going to just spend your money without your permission. 
the money I raised, though, I'm going to go ahead. If we raise 2500 bucks, I don't want to have to come back here right. and say, can I do the warning track? No, truly, we just want to authorize the route to put in a warning track in the wall. Right. Right. That's right? right. At this time, no one's going to do it. At this time, there's no funds. Authorizing them to do it. Right. We're, not, we're not allocating any money toward it or anything. Yes. Should it be on the agenda so that someone looks at this later? And I mean, because he's coming in at public comment. Someone could look at this later and not even know what we're talking about unless they see it on the minutes. You know, I mean, do we need to add this as a new item or something? That yeah, we, yeah I, actually, I added mine and I didn't amend it. I had got, thank you, I had a mine that didn't think. I added item D, warning track at Wallfield. If everybody agrees to that, we will add. Is that okay to add that to you yes. as an action item? Yep. Okay, I wrote down, thank you, Missy, I actually included that in there. Forgot we hadn't done that. Probably a little out of protocol. Well, I didn't prepare you either. I came in. On and off. It's not their fault. I didn't say anything to anybody. CYA, Ralph. CYA. <laughs> Ralph shows up because you know he's wanting money. <laughs> <laughs> I just want permission right now. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a motion by there to authorize Ralph to put in a warning track at the softball field. Second by. Way road is too low. Second by Chef. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Thank you. And then I added an item E as we discussed it. If everybody is in favor of action items for the borings for the three water services that Sam discussed. So we can talk about that. That cost was eight thousand dollars. No. These three water services Sam are on Harry Street. Uh, more, uh, Morris and Max, Max. Morris and Max, 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 and that was one of our. So then we were going to mine green line on that George coming up out of the park, then like it's going down easy. towards the we, corner. We will right. physically, after we get the three homes hooked up to the 10 inch, we'll go back to the south side of Frankfurt Street where it goes into the park, and we can physically dig that water line up and cut it off right there at that point. Because that will be dead the rest of the way down for the other homes. And that's all supply into the campground now. That doesn't, the campground still has one. Okay. That's all old line here right now. That's, yeah. thing, right? That's where our last break was at. We, we could physically dig it up south of where our last break, or north of where our last break was at. We could physically cut it, dig it up and cut the line off and then it. Is that the one that comes from the hill? Yes. We're, we're so slowly we're right down there, down in the park area where we're going to cap it. Yes. We're down. slowly but surely getting working our way back this way to bring that six back around that way. Yep. For a lot less money. The beginning of the project. Yes, that we can physically. We all good service. It's it's that line's a shop. It really is. So I would accept the motion to allow Sam to spend eight thousand dollars on the boring project for the three services on here. Somebody that can make that motion. I'll make that motion, but I don't want to write. <laughs> but I will. Yeah, I make that motion. I'll support it. Anybody agreeing we need to address as an action item? That's all I have. We're going to move on to old business. I think I addressed it in my report about the benches. That's, mm -hmm. That is taken care of. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Rachel, for getting them ordered and moved on. The second one was the hiring of a white officer from Scott. I'll tell you my, my personal opinion. When we hire Scott, when we hire Sam, we go through the interview process, everybody's involved, we have to so hire somebody. Scott's not true to hire a part time person under his control for 80 hours a week. I don't know that we need to go through the entire interview process. My personal opinion is that Scott meets with personnel or a bill on law enforcement and says, here are the two or three people. They look at him, they pick one, and we trust Scott as our chief of police to hire who works underneath him. 
agree. Well, I'm not saying it doesn't on his own. He meets with Bill and talks to personnel, and we move forward. I, so we're all in agreement with that. Is that is that good with you, Scott? And then we can just move forward. Yeah, I think it speeds the process up. I think so too. And realistically, we've got four solid candidates that you know have a long history. Yeah, no problem. Because you're going to be working with them, and I think it's just a choice you should you should make. It. And trust them 100 percent. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a letter of we're going to start somebody that's employed by us. Yeah, and if, if, if not, maybe somebody else. Oh. Oh. The table finally went. Whoa, it's hard. Oh, it's smoke. Yeah, yeah. Right oh. Yeah. Have you make it to the end? It's been Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can do some good things. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, I'm sure Bart's got five people on it. We don't need to win. That's <laughs> <laughs> the next wow. one. Wow. <laughs> all right. There we go. Thanks. We need to do a circle. <laughs> okay, so we all agree on that. Yeah. Good thing there we go. Anybody else have any other goals? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else might have. Any, anything else we'd like to discuss? Or we move on to public yeah. comment for one last time. Susie. I would like to make a comment um, regarding the area that Alden Bank has donated. I know there's a lot of questions and concerns, but I would like to put this in record that I personally and others personally would like to see public restrooms at the village council to consider putting public restrooms up there, downtown area for the village. I just want that on the record, please. And I'll uh, tell you too that I talked to Gary Johnson about the building trade working with us on that. He talked to Ben. I think they're in, in, in agreement to do that. If that's what's allowed between the DDF to tell you the truth, I don't know what it's going to cost. I'm going to come back and say, we all know it comes down to money. I think it's a great idea, Susie. I agree. Personally, I can't speak for council. I think, I, think I think it's great. I think it'd be good. I'm not always going to have one. Right, and so, possibly maybe it could be budgeted. Yeah, so I think you do have to look at the cost of that. Just something to think about. Yeah, it's going to talk about lots of community. I, I think at okay. some point soon, we should get together. Somebody should use the fix the cost of what it would cost to do that. And at least we have the answer to that. We're not saying we do it. But we need to know the cost before we can have the discussion. So, thank you, Steve. I'm sure all the businesses would agree to that. Mm -hmm. And we can charge and get some money out of it. <laughs> no. Any other public comment? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you. All you've done here. Corey, thanks for coming to the DEA. Um, did we discuss suspension under old business? Just was that during the whole debacle down here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was okay. that was why you were talking here. No, it was just that they're done. The benches are in. Okay. They're put in place. And then we're going to have a column. So, I see the same on the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Signed, yeah. It signs up. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. And they did a very nice job voting that sign up. There's no, there's nothing here to book any kids that will cut a burden. Yeah. Take it Great. We'll have Rachel take a nice little picture of the sign. Thank you. Oh, here. No, I think I, I really think we should. I think that'll help. I know the bank wants us to take a nice picture and tell them thank you for the slide. Very appreciate it. We could probably find that letter that was written before on the first time and uh, add an addition to it. The other thing, just to think about the council, um, Sam and I went and looked at it. I'm sure the BBO talked about it. I just, I just realized that I know. We went up and actually looked at the public parking lot we have in the village. We talk about parking a lot in the village. That lot would probably be improved to be a lot more blocked. Get a lot more cars. The width is there, the length is there. We're going to call in touch with Mike Merriweather on the trees. And then I hate when we say cut down the tree. One tree definitely does have to come down. We're going to let Mike look at the other ones. If, if they're diseased, why work around them? Or if Mike thinks they have a five year life left in. So I can tell you that right now, we're going to Mike come look at the trees. Um, I know it's expensive, but I'll, I'll talk to you when we talk about BDA me. But there's, I think that parking lot can be improved a lot. Once again, money. And better signage too. Better, we talk, uh, thank you. We talk about that too. We need signs yeah. downtown, which we can do at any point. You know, we can strike the parking lot the way it is and get signs there stating there is public parking here because people don't realize it. it. It could probably be better lit. So it's a lot of discussion between them and DBA. And back to the council. So we we're slowly moving forward on reasonable parking in the door. Kind of parking. Yeah, let's go over there. Kind of does at this moment. Yes. Yes. So, 
And that is all we're going to talk about. Any other public comments? Thank you all for attending. I accept the motion to adjourn. I'll Oh, I can't. 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 Oh,